All right, we're in section 7.2, simplifying expressions. Uh, one important word here is already in the title, the word simplifying. Does simplifying mean the same thing as solving? No, it doesn't. When I simplify something, um, I'm not necessarily, necessarily looking for an answer. And in all of these uh, expressions that we're solving today, there is no answer. All I'm doing is simplifying the expressions as much as I can, combining my like terms. We're in our books on page 322 if you'd like to follow along in your book. Uh, you don't have to because pretty much everything will be up on the screen for you. All right, we're simplifying expressions today. Okay, first thing we need to do is write down some terms, some important terms from this section. Uh, our first term is what we call a constant and that is a number that stands alone. Our second term is a coefficient. That's the number part that's connected to the variable in a term. So it has to have a variable, but it's only the number part that's called the coefficient. And then the third term is what we call like terms. These have the same variable or they're a number by itself. This is important because when I'm simplifying expressions, I can combine my like terms. So um, let's go through now and identify the constants, uh, coefficients, and like terms in this expression that we see here. All right, do you see any constants, a number that stands alone? Eight. 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 Wait, wait, wait. What's that sign in front of the 10? A uh, negative. So you have to pay attention to each term individually. 2x is positive. 4x is positive or negative? 8 is positive. 10 is negative. So each term individually, guys, has a sign. You've got to pay attention to that. So the coefficients are the number portion of the terms with variables. So I see coefficients here of 2, 4, and 3. 2, 4, and 3. So notice, guys, I didn't write the x. The coefficient is only the number part of that term. All right, and then the like terms, I'm going to group in parentheses and write the entire term, including the sign, 2x, 4x, 3x, and then my numbers, 8 and negative 10. I group my like terms together. This is just like the first three problems on your homework tonight. We're actually going to do one more in a minute. This is just kind of leading into it. Okay, so now let's move into example one. This is really the meat of the lesson. This is the most important part of the lesson. Learning how to combine like terms and simplify these expressions. See guys, we're not solving anything because have I told you what C equals? No. So there's nothing to solve here. All we're doing is we're simplifying, we're combining the like terms where we can. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the commutative property to rearrange the terms so the like terms are next to each other. So do you see any terms in the first one that are like? 7C and negative 3C. So I'm going to put them next to each other. 7C and negative 3C and then my plus 9. You see, guys, I used a commutative property to rearrange the terms. That's all I did. Now... Because I have my common variable, my C's, I can subtract the numbers. Why do I subtract and not add? Why am I subtracting? Because it's, because it's a subtraction sign there. What's 7C minus 3C? 4C. 4C. And then plus 9. This is my answer. I cannot add a number by itself with a number and a variable. They are not like terms. This is my final answer. I want you to try to rearrange the second one now. Try to rearrange it so that your like terms are next to each other. Rearrange it to what? Negative 3x minus 6x plus 10. Now, you might have had a little different, but you should have matched your x's together, and they're both negative. So what's negative 3 minus 6? Negative 3x plus 10. 
Negative nine. Same sign, guys. Same sign. Negative nine x plus ten. Negative 9x plus 10. Well, look at the next one. What do you see here? They all have the d variable, right? So since they're all like terms, I can just add them together. Go ahead and solve that one. I add them all together and I get 27d. 27d. All right, so now on the next one, I want you to, again, match your like terms together, okay? So group your A terms together and group your numbers together, and then I want you to try to simplify them, and then we'll go over it. All right, so I group them together. Did you group your negative 4A and 6A together? Did you do that? Kenzie, did you do that? Yes. Cabria, did you do that? And then did you group your 15 and your negative 25? All right, so big question, and if you're struggling, use your calculator. What is negative 4 plus 6? 2A plus 10. 2A, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is it plus 10? 25 is bigger, it's negative. Minus 10. 2A minus 10. Yeah, 15 minus 25. No, 15 is positive, 25 is negative. 15 minus 25 is negative 10. All right, can you do the next one? Wait, this one's kind of interesting. I've got a variable by itself, just B. What do I know is understood in front of a variable that has no number? Zero. Nope. A one. a one. So this is 8B plus 1B minus 4B plus 10. Simplify this expression. 8 plus 1, guys, is 9. 9 minus 4, Malcolm, is 5B plus 10. 5B plus 10. Who got it right? 5B plus 10. Okay. Catching on? Sort of? All right. Now, what do you see that's different about this last one? I have how many different variables? Two. So my rule for like terms, okay, says this. I can add my x's together, and I can combine my y's together, and then my numbers, but not my x's and y's. Those are not like terms. So I want you to group. Group your x's together, group your y's together, and then your numbers, and then combine your like terms where you can. So we matched up our x's. We put those together, our y's together, and then our number. What's 3x minus 5x? Negative 2x. What's 2y plus 8y? 10y. And then, can I combine negative 15 with anything? No. Nope. There's no other numbers. That's my answer. Who got it? Who got it? Good. Good. Um, questions, guys? Okay, now we're going to kind of go back now to the first thing that we talked about, which is identifying... What are my constants? What are my coefficients and my like terms? Like I said, you have three problems like this on your homework tonight. So I want you to look at this expression, and I want you to tell me which numbers in here are constants, which one's coefficients, and then group your like terms. Uh, notice we're not necessarily solving. We're just identifying the different parts. Okay, what are my constants? Negative 6 and 15. Negative 6 and 15. My number that stands alone. Now, I said 15 and negative 6. Is that the same thing? Yes. Yeah, of course. As long as your signs are right. What about my coefficients? Nine. Nine. Seven R? No, not the R. Only the number part. Negative 9 and 7. Don't forget your sign. Okay, now your like terms, yes. Negative 9 R and 7 R and 15 and negative 6. Notice if it's negative in the uh, expression, I make it negative when I'm identifying the different parts. Okay, if it's negative there, it's got to be negative in parentheses too. So your first three problems on your homework tonight literally look exactly like this. I want you to set it up exactly like this. All right, hopefully we're clear on that. We've got one more example, guys, and we're done. What do you see here that's a little different? 
What do you see? Parentheses. We have parentheses. We need to use the distributive property to get rid of the parentheses. What does that mean? It means take the number on the outside and multiply it by every term inside the parentheses. Well, what did we just say is understood in front of that W? A one. So five times one, I multiply the number parts. What is five times one? Five, and I keep my W, five W. What's five times negative four? Negative 20. And now I just bring down the rest of my expression, and now I'm back where I was in example one. I can rearrange them and then simplify the expression. Which terms would I want to put next to each other? 5w and w. Oh, but wait. w is the same thing as what? 1w. It might be helpful, guys, to go ahead and write it that way, at least for now, so you don't forget that you're adding 5 plus 1. Okay? Minus 20 plus 8. I want you to go ahead and simplify this. Try to come up with your answer. All right, anybody have a guess? It's going to be 6w minus 12. Who got it? 6w minus 12. Malcolm, did you get it? Xander? 6w minus 12. Mackenzie, did you get it? Okay. We can't combine the numbers and variables. All right, I want you to try to do the distributive property on the second one. What is 3 times 2x and 3 times 5? Go ahead and try to rewrite this expression without the parentheses. We have to do the distributive property. Get 6x plus 15. Who got that? 6x plus 15 plus 6x minus 15. Well, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to add my 6x's, yes. What happens to my 15s? They, go, like, go they cancel out. My answer is 12x. All right, now I want you to pay attention to the last one. We don't have time to go over it completely. Okay. I need to do distribute a property, and now how many terms do I have inside my parentheses? How many terms? Three. 15 minus 6a minus 20 plus 6a, plus 6a, minus 5. Guess what? It's the same exact thing. It's just more terms. I need to group my a's together. Negative 6a, plus 6a, plus 6a, plus 15, minus 20, minus 5. I group my a's together. Ooh, anybody see something? See opposites, maybe? Opposites? So now... 6a, and now I just combine my numbers, and guys, you, you can use your calculator. 15 minus 20 minus 5. Negative 10. Okay? That should be everything you need to know for your homework. That's it for 7.2.